Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, this is Kay here from Papercraft with Kay. I want to say thank you very much to all you for joining me today and I want to say thank you especially to all those people who have subscribed to me. I'm really, really grateful for you to do that, for doing that. And I'm so thankful for all those lovely comments that people are also making. So thank you very much for those too. So today I'm in participating in Thrifty Thursday, which is a open collaboration hosted by Cherie of Turquoise Dreaming and I'll put her link below and the idea being is that you share your uh, thrifty finds um, and uh, upload a video with the hashtag um, thrifty thursday so uh, I went up shopping recently to some charity shops and uh, I picked up this book it didn't cost it didn't co cost me one dollar Australian though. and uh, I just thought it was really lovely mainly because of the beautiful pictures I don't can you see the beautiful pictures of the Australian scenery and I thought that I could use those maybe in an Australian journal they're just really lovely they're just they obviously for what they call a desktop um book uh, what's it, no, coffee table book <laughs> coffee table book but they're just beautiful the lovely this is Kings Canyon and um Kachiducha, which is the organs, well, which I, I've been to all of those places. They're beautiful. They are really beautiful. It's just lovely. So very quickly go through it. Hope you can see. There's a picture of a Sturt Desert Pea. This Sturt Desert Pea is a very red flower. I hope you can see. Um, grows. It's a national. It's the not national. It's a flower album for South Australia. And don't does grow in desert areas you don't really see it very often so I've, I've only ever seen it once growing in the wild isn't it gorgeous so people think of the far north of australia being dry and it is like that a lot of the time but you also get some of the uh beautiful waterfalls in the northern territory and queensland this is tasmania tasmanian devil lovely beautiful tasmania is a beautiful place to have been there as well has some really old convict history because um, when convicts were sent to Australia from from England for as punishment, they a lot of them went to Tasmania and there's lots of old colonial buildings built there. So just really, this must be not this. This must be somewhere else. Didn't really check to see what it was. We won't go back. South Australia is where I live, Kangaroo Island. Been there once, I've been back since because it costs a bit of money to go over on the ferry. So I thought that was a beautiful book to be used. It only cost me, like I said, it only cost me a dollar. I could probably use it in an Australian journal. And I picked up this pack of cards, also for a dollar, Australian. So I don't know what that is in America. And I picked it up because Cadbury is a chocolate company. Um, don't know if you have that in places. So I just got, basically got it because of the lovely, um, lovely, uh, what is it, old adverts. Just perfect for a journal. Out of interest. Just lots of them. They're really, I mean, obviously the cards are new, but the illustrations are old, so maybe I could just stress around the um, pictures or cut them out, I don't know, I have to think about it. I've not really done a lot of altering playing cards, so I'd have to maybe look on YouTube and check it out to see what people do. I know I've seen people deck, um, do the whole card, but I wondered how you would do it to make sure you kept the image. Just thought it was really interesting. My daughter's got that. Have I got the other? Do you know, I've got that very picture on my wall just here. Because <laughs> we went to the Cadbury factory when we went to Tasmania when, a long time ago now, we went to the Cadbury factory. I don't even know if the Cadbury factory is still there anymore. And we bought that post because I really liked it. The, of the dairy maid with her dairy cans. Oh, 
second one, mate. Not very lovely, though. Really lovely. So, I thought that'd be really good to have. Because they're so neat, they're very slippery, so I'm dropping them all over the place here. <laughs> oh dear. Very slippery. I think there's a trick to make sure they're not so slippery. I can't remember what it was. I caught some between my legs there, so I put them there. Then I picked up this um, flower gardening gift cards because I quite like the folder. I wonder if that could be turned into a journal. But definitely the cards could be put in journals. So just lovely, again, lovely pictures, illustrations. Really some nice envelopes to go with them. That was, what was that smell? Camphor. Camphor? I reckon that's, isn't that what they use for math, mothballs? So it must have been kept in a cupboard somewhere. That's what I can smell. Camphor. Mothballs. Side. They're all different. So the numbers, are they all different or are they two the same? No, I think they're all different. So they're lovely, really lovely pictures. Very, very British, I would say. Anyway, so I thought that would be Victorian flower garden. Yes. Beautiful. Lovely on the back as well. I thought that was. A good little pick up. These cards are slipping all over the way, so excuse me while I put them back in the box before they slip away any further. Put them there. I picked up some golden books, they're all um, soft cover ones, the fire engines. It's beautiful, lovely, bright images in this one. I've got a few golden books and I need to turn them into journals. It's just a matter of finding a method that I like because I think I quite like the illustrations, but um, what else do you put in them besides that? Some people just added other stories, so just night before Christmas. This is a hard one. Oh, sorry, this fire engine's one was uh, uh, 1981. Night Before Christmas, this is a hard one, this looks more new, uh, this is 2001, yes, new, new. it says, got the pictures, but I don't know if I, now that I've picked it up, I've just picked it up without looking at the pictures, and I don't know if I like the pictures enough, but they're, they're cute enough, I suppose, but I've seen cuter, more traditional kind of pictures, a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to Christmas, Paddington's Busy Day, it's also a hard one. Uh, this one is 1987. Oh, so this is new. One year after my young, eldest daughter was born. So, Story of Paddington. Nice illustrations. That'd be this one. I'm a T-Rex. This is a hard one as well. 2010. This, the pictures are really, really what they call simple. They're lovely. I just they're sort of bright and he, the T Rex definitely figures in the story. They're yeah, lovely. Tells the story of how T Rex was. Then they got the rabbit's adventure. This is a soft one. Uh, 1977, this is a bit older. Obviously somebody's drawn in their book. I have pictures in there, aren't they beautiful? It's so cute. It's lovely illustrations. I mean, the people look a bit dated, but the pictures themselves of the animals are like, just gorgeous. It's just really, really lovely. That was pretty good. And this one is Blinky Bill. Blinky Bill is a, an Australian character. There are stories around Blinky Bill. Blinky Bill used to be on TV. It's a, it's a cartoon character. 
$19.98. So I picked this up because this is an Australian Blinky Bill. Blinky Bill was always up to sort of, sort of a mischief. And he had his characters and his story as well. Like Nazi was another koala. Wombi was the wombat. I uh, thought this would be... I like the illustrations in this as well. Sure, I think it's supposed to take the spine off and then work from there. <laughs> now I picked up these two mainly because this was in not a very good condition, and this one is. But I thought I could cut the pictures out of that one, stick in this one there when I made a journal. So I'm just going to show you the pictures of the soft of one of them. This one is 1980. So again, I picked up the pictures. The illustrations are just, just gorgeous children's you know like when you're young you don't really appreciate the pictures and stories but you know like I, when my children were growing when we were younger um, they're grown up adults now and I certainly appreciate the pictures and their stories too so in this one the bananas in better condition is 1961 what was that one 1961 oh no that was 1980 printing so what this one is so anyway, so I thought I'd get the two of those because I went. I think I picked all of those up for a dollar each, so that was pretty pretty good. Then I picked this up because I thought um, for um, for Christmas books, I just thought it would be for Christmas journals. I just thought there would be like another added page put in the journal. So if, and I just thought how lovely they were. Whether I will actually use them for that or keep them for an activity for my children, my grandchildren come around, I don't know, really know, but I just, it is vellum. So I think it would add really, really something really different to a journal. See, like even this one probably wouldn't have to be a Christmas journal, but it could be a winter journal because it's got the two birds and the trees. So it's got snow in it, so it couldn't be just used for spring. Snowman. It's, it's quite a lot. I'm not going to go. There's quite a lot of pictures. My more fingers than thumbs today. Just, oh, that's cute. I don't know if you can see them because of the. See, that's lovely. Okay. Why didn't I do that before? It would have been a lot easier. Really lovely. Some of them really do look like stained glass. Some of them are just normal pictures, but I just think they're because they're called stained glass colouring in. If I was a teacher again, you know, I used to, I used to be a teacher before I retired. I'd give that one of these a page to every child and they could colour it in if they wanted to. Because they'd give me some text, text as we call them in Australia. Jeez. I thought that would be six coloured markers. And they all look like this totally unopened, definitely not even being used, this book. So I thought that was pretty good. And then I keep picking up her books. <laughs> this is a Reader's Digest one. And uh, how much was this one? This was only $2. Again, Australian. Look at that lovely colour green. And I just actually really love that. I don't know if it's maybe too big for a journal. It's very thick. But I just thought, again, this is another book with those beautiful lovely illustrations look at that 1552 talks about how uh, indigenous peoples use uh, plants around them for herbal reasons people in medicine so this would be very interesting Interesting book if you wanted to read it, I probably should. I like reading things about things I'm interested in. 
finding plants in the wild so you could go out and have a look and this is actually related to Australia oh wonderful because I've never whenever I go bushwalking with my husband, my husband Tony I'm never sure what plants are edible and which ones are not that I would need to but um, it would be useful knowledge I think and here are some of the plants themselves look at that this is one page one beautiful drawing and it's not overly glossy it's sort of not really matte but it is a bit glossy so trouble is you would have to decide if you wanted to stick it on a tag whether you wanted to have that side or that side or whether you'd create a whole pocket a whole page using the whole thing i think that probably would be the way to go but aren't they lovely illustrations that's so gorgeous I like the fact that like I said this, I like the fact that it's actually Australian because I know some of them aren't. I oh, know some of them some of them aren't. This one is bergamot. Does it grow in I don't know if it grows in Australia. It talks about in the, how the American Indians used to uh, natives used to use it. This is just like a whole world thing. I need to read the book so I can find out where it is. But I like the fact that, like I said, it includes Australian ones, which is really good. Because eucalyptus uses, a lot of people use eucalyptus as a, um, if you put it, you can help you, it helps you breathe almost like a, uh, so it means you can use um, well, uh, eucalyptus or trees and leaves. When you need one of those, what they call them, steam in, in inhalations when you've got a croaky chest. Do people actually use steam inhalations anymore? So, uh, it's just the whole book is just full of beautiful drawings, lovely grabby, lovely headings. It's a well looked after book, really well looked after. Verbena. I love verbena. It has a really lovely smell. We had lemon verbena growing in our, 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 our garden that we had in the country. But we moved downsize a little bit. We've still got some more downsizing to do, I think, before we get too old. But it's just... The pictures are just really lovely. Native pepper. Oh, so it was used by Aborigines in Northern Queensland to soothe sore gums. There you go. Money wart. Does it grow money? <laughs> oh no, so it was used for treatment of wounds and sores since me medieval times. That sounds like to me it's a combination of... Oh, because it's actually like a New Zealand one, so... <laughs> Around the world, which is really good. <coughs> I love a red poppy. I know it's really sad that this is in um, so many fields of poppies got destroyed in the Second World War, maybe the First World War. That's what became a symbol for remembrance. Let's see that. Oh, look at that beautiful colour. Spindle trees. Habitat. A native of Europe and Western Asia. And it grows in New Zealand. New Zealand has a number of plants that are becoming a bit of a problem because they're not native to the environment and sort of choke out the other native plants. But that's just lovely. Poisonous plants, yes. A lot of people grow their oleander in, in their gardens in Australia, but um, and it looks beautiful. It really does, and it was only when we were looking for to grow up some plants in the garden <clears throat> when we had our house in the country. And I really liked Oleander, though. We did some research and we found out that it was um, poisonous. That we knew that we had young children. We thought, oh no, it's probably not a good idea to have poisonous leaves in the garden when you've got young children because they just uh, tend to sort of have a nibble of try things without you knowing. Some recipes. Oh, that's good. Vegetables. Oh, they look good. 
some of them and some scented how to make scented bags shampoo blonde highlighting wrist rinse mm. and you camel flowers chopped lemon peel orange blossom water digestive aids congestion well that's a very useful little book did i say what year it was i don't think i did so that's Reader's Digest. Um, let's have a look. 1994. Hmm. So that's really a really good book, I thought. So I hope you've enjoyed what I've shown you today. Please give me the thumbs up. Make a comment if you like what you've seen. And I hope to see you next time. So glad you're here today. Bye-bye.